with the latest audio voice note that was leaked by the person who called Sunday Bowo in prison. Well, emotions are high and there is a lot of uncertainty. I mean, Sunday Bowo said he does not care if they want to bring him back to Nigeria. He's getting fed up of the legal system in Benin Republic and particularly the lawyer representing him. He said the lawyer has not treated him with respect and the lawyer is actually just collecting money and all of that. With this, there is a lot, I mean a lot, a lot that is going to be unfolded. They are trying to tell Sunday Adeya Moibu to be a little bit calm and see the legal process of Benin Republic because what are we seeing in Nigeria might not be um, something that is you know, and, and that is going to be as soft as what is happening in Benin Republic. They are trying to contrast both together. Your present predicament in Benin Republic and that of Nigeria will not be the same. Let us take Nam De Kanu's um, issue as an example. The lawyer representing Nam De Kanu has to be stripped naked. They, a lot of things are happening, and I, I don't know if Sunday Bo will be able to cope in Nigeria. But he said he's not afraid of all of this. So many things are in the audio. Uh, I do not need to go back to it as I've already, you know, given you guys that one. Um, you heard him speaking at length about this, about that, complaining about that, and many other things. But the only good thing is that Sunday Google is um, fearless. He's not afraid. He has not been beaten down. He's not on his knees. He's not even laying down on the floor on his chest. He's still standing on his feet, even if. A part of his feet has been, you know, hit somehow. Of course, we are not going to say he's not um, feeling or experiencing some problems. He's just standing as a man. He's quite unfortunate what happened, how his house was invaded and all of that. He talked about that. He said, I am a one billion man. But unfortunately, what happened on that particular day is something that uh, um, it's just a mystery. He, there is a lot of things that um, probably wasn't prepared or there were certain things that um, they researched about him so as to be able to get him down. It could be any of that. Well, right now, what people are saying is this. They are, they are pushing the Yoruba monarchs, the paramount rulers, the first class obas, like the owner of Ife. Um, he has been contacted. He sent his legal representative to um, see into the 12 people that are um, they arrested in Sunday Bowser. I mean, the two that have been kept there. And also, they are speaking to um, the other monarch, other monarchs in Yoruba land to also rise up to this. Um, we are talking of a man who walks freely, does his things freely, has, he, at least he, 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 he got to, a, at least he had a level of success in his life. This is someone who could eat whenever he wants to eat. You know, drive his cars and all of that now is now somebody who cannot do any of this again and the very bad part of this the terrible part of this is this he said i have not committed any crime in Benin republic so why am i being kept in Benin republic that is it if somebody who did not uh, seek for Benin republic passport if he actually used a nigerian passport or any of this um, why is Benin Republic holding him down? That is the problem. That is the question. He said, so I have not committed any crime in Benin Republic. Benin Republic does not have the right to hold me down. He even complained about uh, the handcuffs that were put on him. He said his lawyer was unable to even get the handcuffs off from his hands. But um, he's been advised to just take calm. That he needs to understand that the rules and regulation of Benin Republic is um, different. And also the interest of Nigeria on him in Benin Republic. Um, these things are very complex. They just want him to stay calm and get himself off from all of this. We don't know if they're probably just keeping him so as to release the, reduce the tension and eventually allow him to travel out of uh, the Republic. Probably are going to rule us. Okay, we have nothing against him. That is the thing. What do they have against on their day? If he had, if, if anyone has permission to travel from other West African countries, so if he has Nigerian passport with him, why are they holding him? That is the question. Why are they holding him? Although you all know what happened at the airport, he was about to move out of the airport with the passport. I don't know if he doesn't have a visa on it. Do not forget that he had a resident permit and um, you, you, airlines will request you to show them your resident permit if they are going to um, book you for you know flying abroad you know, to Europe. Definitely you will need to present your you know resident permit and all of that. And definitely your passport so if the passport is with the DSS and he has no um, resident permit with him 
um, did he actually go to the embassy, German embassy or any of the European embassy over there to get him at least a travel document or something? That is not clear in this matter. So the noise and all of the, you know, you know the, the all the noise and the struggle at the airport is what prompted other immigration officers who were not part of the arrangement, who were not part of the uh, package that the Buhari's regime, of course, you know, Brotai, the failure man, the man who couldn't get terrorist, um, you know, who, who was part of the terrorist business, is there in Benin Republic. He was the one that facilitated the private jet and everything and also probably paid money. Yes, definitely paid money to certain immigration officers. So, as to get Sunday go, they already put the word down, and that is what happened. They were about, you know, marching him down to the private jet so as to be flown back to Nigeria. Um, that is when he screamed and shouted, and his wife also did the same. And with that, he was able to escape. You know, the other immigration officers who were not bribed got involved in it, and they took Sunday go, um, you know, to a detention, a holding center, and that is what led to this. They are taking him to the court and all of that. And I'm wondering why are they even taking him to the court? If someone is trying to get out, they said the reason they are taking him to court is to make sure um, to find out if he's not in their country to cause problems. Someone is trying to get out of your country. You say the person is your, uh, they want to find out if the person is in your country. All of this is all, all, all more or less about who is going to drop the IS cash. Is government of Nigeria going to drop more cash or let's get a little bit more of, out of it? You know, it's it's a mystery. It's a mystery. Um, but the Republic is aware of what is happening in Nigeria anyway. Now, the problem with all of this is this. The Yoruba Obas might not be so willing to offer assistance. Why? When Sunday Adeyemo kicked out the Seriki, who was a middleman between the terrorist kidnapper bandits, you know, and the people that were, you know, murdered, people were, you know, and the people of that particular part, um, he, you know, Sunday will give him an ultimatum and kick them out. And he was ready to do more of this. This was like a little bit of um, injury to Buhari's regime, who felt that uh, Sunday Bowie is after his own tribe. All right. Now, on your affair, not even the Ikuba Bayeye, on your affair, went down to see Buhari. If you could recollect back then, I brought you guys so everyone knew, knew about this one. Everyone knows about it. He went down there to meet Buhari. When he came out, he said, let us allow security agents, let us allow the governor, let us allow people who are to handle this, handle this. Do not take laws into your own hands. And they thought that that was a step that, that should be taken. But we all know that there is nothing that's going to be done. The, 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 the position of the, of the governor, I mean, the stand of the governor and all of the attitude that has been displayed shows that he is not even ready to go to that land. Whenever anyone is arrested, they are afraid. That is it. And when you kind of um, look at the people that are being murdered regularly on daily basis, and you cannot see that effective action of the security agents or the governor of that state, then it becomes a problem. I don't know if the governors feel that there are certain individuals who are jacking all of this for yet maintaining and committing crime. I wouldn't know. But um, it's a very terrible thing. The governor cannot get down into the bush into all those places to do what he needs to do do not forget that the governor is not in charge of the police or the dss and any of that it is the federal government so the governors are simple simply figure it let us understand what nigeria is a lot of people do not even understand what nigeria is buari is nothing without the security agents being loyal to him that's as simple as abc even buari himself his legs were not so standing he felt that the other military men who don't like him might even plan a coup. So that is why he left Brutai there until final, finally he had to get Brutai off. Why? Because he needed people that he, that he trusts. He knows that the military can get him off and kill him. Don't forget he's still a military man and he knows how these things work. So Buhari himself, his legs were not too standing. What does, it, what does that tell you? That government, I mean, like the presidency, governors and the rest of those people are powerless. They are nothing. Loyalty. Bribing. Is what works for them the security agents it could be the military police dss and the rest of them the ones with the guns they are the ones that control in africa that's it it's as simple as abc they are the ones that control everything in africa just look at what happened recently look at what happened in guinea look at what happened a coup the person holding the umbrella on the head of the president is the one that actually made sure they give he gave the president a serious slap 
and they locked him up. So what I'm trying to say in essence is this. All of this is so complex. And I hope that the um, Yoruba kings will come together and begin to pressure and do what is right. That is just what it is. Because what Sonic Bowo came out for is what they should have been coming out to do. Come on, we cannot keep sleeping and um, waking up wherever uh, we are and feel that we are safe. Probably you're in, you're in Lagos, you're in some other parts where none of these things are happening and you think life goes on. No, these things are happening. People are being murdered. There are cases that have been proven and shown that these are Earthsmen, Fulani Earthsmen. Look at what happened to um, Shores, um junior brother recently. The woman who escaped said the people who killed her brother, uh, brother are the people who kidnapped her, but she was able to escape. And she said, these are fuller. These are fuller. So whatever uh, is going to come up later, well, as we always saying, I want to return back to Nigeria. I want to return back to Nigeria. I hope he, he, he takes a, he relax a little bit and chill a little bit so he can get to better, uh, out of the Republic, straight to Germany, and try to get himself back to normal. Then he can begin to talk about fighting because what happened to him is a serious one if he comes to nigeria he will be straight to the prison so where are you going to be fighting is it in the prison no you are better out there even if your 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 freedom is not 100 percent you are better out there than in a prison in nigeria that's my own thought what are your thoughts drop it in the comment section if you're just coming across the channel tap on the subscription and red notification icon bell